Hey everyone, welcome back to part two of topic four in our database class. And in this video, I'm going to discuss entity classes versus instances of entities. So at this point, we can distinguish between what's called an entity class and an entity instance. Now remember, entity here is the term that we're using for the same concept as a relation or a table. It's just when you talk about entity relationship diagrams, well, the entity is the thing that is represented, but it's the same concept as a table. Now, we do need to differentiate between classes and instances, however, and uh, I know that many people have never done any object-oriented programming. But if you have, I'll briefly take a moment to comment on this because this will tie this concept to something that hopefully you, you already remember from your studies of computer programming. So the difference between an entity class and an entity instance is directly analogous to the difference between a class and an object in object-oriented programming, right? The class is framework. It's almost a recipe or so I put here architectural blueprints, right? It tells you the structure of, of the data storage object, right? But it doesn't actually involve any data, right? It's just a description of the structure, right? Now, individual occurrences of the entity are called instances. And you could think of these as rows in the table, right? So, there's a little philosophy here, but if we think of an entity class and its role in a database design, what we are thinking of is it's a model, right? So it's a simplified version of the real world object or idea or construct. And we're including a intentionally chosen set of attributes that we are using together to represent the associated entity. So uh, if I have, say, a customer entity, I'm going to choose a set of attributes. Maybe like I have a customer ID to serve as a primary key, maybe the customer's name, phone number, mailing address, email address, whatever, whatever sort of attributes we have. But the point is that the collection of those attributes is a customer as far as our database or the systems upon which it relies are concerned. Right, it's all that we know about each customer is those values for the attributes that we've chosen. So when we take that set of attributes and we give each of them a value, it is that collection of attribute values then that is an entity instance. And it represents one real world thing. It's a model of one real world thing. So if I say that this is a customer number seven, and uh, the customer's name is, I don't know, Amy Farrah Fowler. And uh, we have her address and her phone number and her email address. So that is, as far as our system is concerned, a customer, right? And in the parlance of the entity relationship language, that is an entity instance. So it's a specific occurrence of an entity class. If I have my example of customer number seven, Amy Farrah Fowler, along with her phone number, mailing address, and email address, that is a customer. It reflects or represents a real world thing, one instance of a customer, and hopefully it should be unique within our table. So conceptually, it's a row in a table, but there's a little philosophy under this as well. Right? So instances are specific occurrences of an entity class. When we are creating an entity relationship diagram, we are designing then the entity classes and the relationships between them. Right? We're not designing instances of the entity. They will all conform to whatever our general design is for as represented by the entity class. All right. So again, if you've done some object-oriented programming about the idea of classes versus objects, and conceptually, it's very, very similar here. Entity classes versus entity instances. So we can instantiate a class to create an entity instance. All right, let's see it in graphical form. Hopefully this will prove useful. Now, as we can see on the top here, 
we have a little rectangle that contains the names of some attributes. And up on top, we have the name of the entity. Okay. So this is just a graphical way of representing an entity class, right? We have the entity class shown as a rectangle. It's a name is clearly obvious up at the top. And then we just have a list of the attributes that together comprise that entity class. Right? So it's just a framework, right? It's a structure. It's a blueprints or a mold or a recipe. And once we start to provide specific values for these various attributes, like once I have an item number and a description of that item and its cost, its list price, and how many of them we have in our inventory, then what we're doing is we are recording information about an instance of an item, a specific real world thing. Okay. And down here, then we can see a couple of examples of entity instances. Okay, so they all just conform to this general framework or design that we created above, right? So this is an item. This collection of attribute values is an item, as is this one. Okay. And of course, we can map these up to their attributes. This would be our item number, right? This is a 100 amp electrical panel. So that would be the description, and you can see... Our cost for it is $127.50. We charge $170 to our customers for this, and we have 14 of them in inventory. So these all just map up here to these attributes. And the same applies to our other example of an entity instance over here. Right? So it's like we're dealing with hardware items. Maybe if you go to Home Depot or something, you might encounter some sort of database design that looks like this. <laughs> has to be generic enough to capture anything from electrical panels to the handles that go on a door. <laughs> so we have our item number, our description, our cost. And uh, wow, this is interesting. It's, I don't know why we would, <laughs> why would we charge less for an item than we pay for it ourselves? Who knows? Maybe that's why we don't have any of them in inventory. People recognize that that was a good deal. They came in and bought them all. Uh, so we're charging $12 less for them here than we are paying for it. Won't stay in business long if you do that. Although many companies do have a sort of loss leading item where they lose money on it, but uh, nevertheless, it encourages you as a customer to purchase other things. And grocery stores are notorious for that, right? Many of the staple items sold in grocery stores like milk or cheese or bread are sold at zero profit or negative profit. And uh, the idea is to get you in the store and then you'll buy other stuff there that's profitable. Okay, so entity class versus entity instances. If it helps, just uh, think of it, map these ideas to things you already know, right? This is a table. Each of these is a row in a table, right? So you already understand these things. We're just giving them some new labels and a little philosophical foundation.